We've just had a very successful um, march in Canberra on the 26th of January 2017. It was supported by some say 600 people and we marched from the embassy to Parliament House to deliver a proclamation. With, I guess, um, and I hope soon that the Governor-General will understand the merits of meeting with a delegation to talk about that proclamation. I would like to say that this statement, it's a declaration, a proclamation, it's political and it's legal, but it's also healing. It's important for our people to understand that the government knows their deficiencies, the government knows of their illegalities, the government knows that they don't have sovereignty of their own in Australia. Australia is a country that operates under the sovereignty of England, not in its own right. This is depicted in all the laws that are passed in the Parliament. And it makes it even much more remarkable that the government and the whites in this country should argue that they have power and authority as a nation state when they have to get a representative of, of a foreign power to sign their legislation that they pass in a parliament, be it state, federal or territory, uh, into law. And so if, when you look at that, if the parliaments of Australia cannot pass a law uh, without, and make it legal without the signature of the Queen of England representative, then there's some serious questions that has to be asked. You don't have to be Einstein to understand that no law in this country is a law without the signature of that foreign monarch. Now, when Australia talks about a, a sovereign power, it having sovereign power and jurisdiction over Australia, this is not quite true. They, they profess and they act out as if they are a sovereign power. Um, but their sovereignty is limited now um, by the fact that their law is not law without the Queen's signature or a representative signature. What we have, though, is, a, is in the Australian Constitution, uh, if you look at the beginning of the Constitution, it says that we are a nation state, or Australia is a nation state, um, made up of colonies who agreed to unite into a federal parliament and um, and that federal parliament is only able to make laws for the purposes of what's in the constitution and if they want to get involved themselves in any state matters in in this is federalism if you get into the state law then if the parliament ha that state parliament has to forego that power and transfer it to the commonwealth um, of its own volition um, now, right now, the states retain a lot of power and the Commonwealth is restricted to national and international monetary um, matters, um, taxes as well as, um, as, well as military um, and, and, of course, dealing with foreign, uh, foreign countries. Now, Australia has been... Uh, the Australian government, if you look at um, where they get that authority from, that authority is not from, to, to form that government, the authority was not made from Australia. Right. The authority came from England and they, uh, Australia operates under the sovereignty of England, not under Australian sovereignty because Australia does not have sovereignty. And this is what people need to understand. Um, and so when it comes to Aboriginal people, us, the, na uh, the, the, the First Nations peoples, um, people need to accept the fact that First Nations in their own right have their own laws and customs and usages and they've added before 1788 and of course those laws are still paramount they are what we call the continental common law of this country and of course uh, all those laws survived because we were never ceded, we never ceded, we were never conquered. Thus the breaches of these legal instructions are described as fraudulent, treasonable and genocidal all of which have been committed by the illegal and political establishment of the British and the domestic colonial governments of Australia. They could not usurp our laws and make them their own and have the power to change those laws because that's not their law, that's our sovereign power, that's our sovereign law under our law and custom.
whereas we insert that we remain independent, sovereign, Aboriginal nations and people. We assert that we have never ceded nor relinquished our sovereignty under any terms or conditions to the occupying colonising power. Now, Australia recognised, uh, recognised the fact that these things subsist, our powers, our sovereignty subsist, but they're not recognised by, uh, by the system, by the political system and the legal system within Australia. To do so means that if Australian judges and the, and the, and the um, parliaments were to recognise them in their, own, in their own right, then that means we have two countries sitting side by side uh, in this country, which is the reality anyway, yeah. But the the British imposed system, they can't recognise it because then they give away their authority, they give away their power, yeah. And so to maintain that power, they have to sustain this this wall of silence there, to say no, we operate for the white people, and that and that's a fact. They operate for the white people only, and the immigrants. They do not operate for Aboriginal people over here. And our people have succumbed to the Stockholm Syndrome where they don't know the difference between the two. They don't know the relationship. And the only way, why, one of the reasons why is that because these fellows have got the money, they've got the power, they've got the police, they've got the military, and they fear, our people fear this, because our people don't have the money, they don't have the resources, they don't have the capacity to build their army to defend themselves, they don't have the capacity to police within their own communities even though if they, they can, if they choose, but they have to do it on a voluntary basis. And then we have to get these people here, the government uh, and, and the power of authorities, to stay away from us. So it's getting to a point now where we need an intermediary, um, and that intermediary can only be the United Nations and their peacekeepers. And then we, we if, if we're going to do anything about uniting as a nation, and we're gonna have to do that whether we like it or not, um, but it's got to be on our terms, because we are the law of the land. They're an imposed law, right? They're an occupier, they're an occupying power. And as an occupying power, we have to negotiate. And of course, there is no one size shoe fits all here. Um, this, every nation has a right to do their own thing and make their own mind up in the pathway that they need to go. Uh, our people, uh, at present fear to stand on their own simply because we are totally financially dependent upon the white system. And, um, and the white system has been very clever because they've made us and they've created this dependency. And by creating this dependency, they maintain power and control over us. If we had that resources of our, in our own right, um, there would be a very big difference in the Aboriginal society there wouldn't be the disadvantage that we see, there wouldn't be the poverty that we would see. Um, and so the government bans us from successfully negotiating with mining companies and, and developing our own land. They do that because our people, um, our people don't have the resources and the manpower to go out there and stop the mining companies on their country. Um, and so, and our people are torn because they don't know what their legal rights are to stop a company on their land. Um, and we need to look at this very clearly. And so we need to look, get back into our communities and begin to tell our people and create that confidence. Otherwise our people will go through life now with the Stockholm Syndrome whereby they speak for their oppressor, they represent their oppressor's opinion. They try and argue that we should become part of our oppressor and become part of that system. Um, because they say there's nothing wrong with that system. But when you look back on it, uh, that system is, is just as corrupt. Their own people are, are sick and tired of it. You know, to, to become part of a white system does not help us in any way. Yeah? All it is is that we give them the authority um, to rule over us and then we live under their laws. We, we are influenced by their beliefs and customs and we forego ours. That's what, that's what this is about. You might realise they call this thing called certainty. They want certainty in the sense of what this constitution was to give to them. It means that it legitimises all the crimes they've committed us against us in the past. Mm -hmm. 
and legitimise all the crimes they are committing against us today. Yeah. And it will also legitimise all crimes that they are going to commit against us in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And that we, if we agree to that, we have become willing participants in our own destruction, of our own enslavement. In terms of um, us and exercising authority and, and uh, exercising sovereign dominion and decision making over our territories is is um, is thwarted by the fact that you know their their um, the laws that they make have to be considered by their courts and the judges that they appoint, and the judges belong to that system that sits in that system. Um, we, on the other hand, we can sort of we, we can step outside of that jurisdiction um, because we don't belong to that jurisdiction, and of course um, we now have a number of significant court cases that give us that authority to be able to stay outside the system and work and, and move outside the system and question the jurisdictional powers. Um, but we have to be very you know people have to be educated. It's, this is not a, a free for all. It's it's. Um, understanding that you've got to be on your country doing your thing under your law and custom, not living in someone else's country trying to express some sort of sovereign, inherent sovereign right um, whilst you're off your own land. It, well, it doesn't work like that. You have to be within your own country. And of course, um, here in this case here, there are um, methods by which we can use within the existing system, but that all is influenced by international law. It's not, influ not influenced by any domestic law. All the domestic laws work against us. The international laws create those rights to be self-determining, and we now have to look at how those international laws have been integrated into the common law system of Australia, and how and Australia now has a legal obligation to protect those rights and uh, ensure those rights are not interfered with. Um, but that's, that's up to us now to make those things happen ourselves. We can't ask people, you know, if you ask a non-Aboriginal person to come along and represent you in terms of your rights, they're going to be thinking within the concepts that they've been taught, that they know, that they belong to in, in their society. Um, it's very, it's almost impossible for a non-Aboriginal person to step outside of that and, and step into our society, and then argue from a you know from an Aboriginal perspective. Um, that's that's not going to happen in reality, and this is why, when we look at court cases run by non-Aboriginal people in ca in courts for and on behalf of Aboriginal people, um, we tend to have a, a miscued judgment uh, because they've not been able to articulate our issues properly, or there's an unwillingness, in the, and so. And the language that you use, if you don't understand the English language, well, you can be very tricked into the fact that, um, you know, while on the one hand they sound, they seem like they're saying something really wonderful in the court for and on your behalf, when in fact they, they, uh, they're acknowledging, yes, there are limited resources here and there are limited powers that we Aboriginal people have and we acknowledge and we cede to those powers, and Aboriginal people are not aware of the fact that that's what's going on in, that, in those discussions because they don't understand that language properly. Um, so we need to be very careful and we need to take control here. The only way that I foresee bringing that day about is if we, we unite. I'd like everybody here to raise their fist in solidarity. From here you go back to your communities, you go back to your country and you spread the word. We are mobilising. I've got a message from the Young Black Movement. We are coming to Canberra as a people. Yeah. And we're coming in force. Yeah. We need numbers. But we've reached that point where we now have to um, um, get back into our, into our communities, get back into our lands and pull people together and say, OK, what is it that we want? And unfortunately, um, because of the financial dependency and the welfare dependency that we have, it makes it makes that job almost that uh, almost impossible. Because our people, the first thing they're going to say is, "What if they cut off our welfare? What if they cut off our pension? What if we can't go to a doctor anymore?" You know, and of course these are very real questions. Um, so this is something that we, you know, we have to understand that our people are in fact caught between the devil and deep blue sea. 
And it's only because they've kept the resources away from us, it's kept, them, kept us away from being able to make money in our own right, in being able to develop our own economy. And so they maintain this welfare dependency to ensure that Aboriginal people do not rise up and gain some sort of power and exercise those powers because they know that within the current legal system they cannot stop us if we got the resources.